You probably heard this a bunch of times already, but 2023 is one of the best years of video games of all time. And the main reason why is because we got amazing games in every single genre, from fighting to shooters to sports game, racing games, every single one of these categories got their awesome game this year. And you probably saw a bunch of lists, a bunch of people already talk about a lot of these games, but I never got the chance to talk about any of these on this platform yet, so this is my chance to finally share with you guys my top 10 list of favorite games of 2023. Now, obviously, if you guys are new here, welcome. My name is Eddie. You guys should subscribe to the channel because we're going to do a lot of variety content on here. But I didn't get the chance to do any variety this year because I was focused on other stuff. So this is going to be the first of many variety content. But like I said, I didn't get the chance to talk about any of these games previously. So I'm going to try and go through it as fast as I can. Obviously, this is just a personal list. I'd love to know what's your list of your favorite games of the year. So comment down below your top 10, top 5, or just your game of the year. Whatever you want to do, just comment down below. Subscribe for a lot of content and give this video a thumbs up because it helps the YouTube algorithm so it gets shared with the world. Now, let's get started. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I lied. I lied. <laughs> I... I said we we're going to get started the list, but there are a couple games that I need to mention that are not on the list that I want to answer why. First up are Diablo 4, Starfield, and Lies of P. All three of these games I did play this year, but I didn't play enough of them, so I don't actually know if they're game of the year worthy for me. But maybe if I played a little bit more, but like just said, I just want to mention I had fun with those for the amount I played, but all three I played less than like 5 hours or 10 hours in total. So... Did not make the list for that reason. Then there are four games that I didn't play at all, but from seeing gameplay, reviews, trailers, and everything, I feel like from watching them, I know if I did play them, they would probably make this list. I still want to mention them here because I'm going to play them during the holiday break and my list can obviously change between now and then. Persona 5 Tactica, Alan Wake 2, Sea of Stars, and Cocoon. Those four games, everything about them are so Eddie style games that I'm like, I, I know I'm going to like these games and they would probably be top 10, uh, like on my top 10, but I haven't played them yet. So just so you know, and then the big one that if you guys know me, if you've been following me on Twitter, or if you follow me on Twitch, you probably know this, but a lot of people on YouTube don't Baldur's Gate three. <laughs> I did not like Baldur's Gate three at all. I played the game for almost 20 hours and it was not fun. I did not have a single minute that I enjoyed that game. So it's not on the list. Please don't unsubscribe already. Please don't go down in the comments. I personally did not have fun with it. Happy you guys liked it, but just want to mention it because it's not on the list. And before I start getting attacked and people are like, why is it not there? I didn't enjoy it. All right. Now to the actual top 10 list. Let's get started. All right, my number 10 is a game that came out of nowhere, really, and it will count as a game, even though a lot of people are going to say it doesn't. I'm telling you, I'm going to count it, and that's LEGO Fortnite. Now, look, LEGO Fortnite is a free-to-play survival game that is in the engine of Fortnite, so you have to go through Fortnite to play, but it is a new game. They did say that this is just going to be in there, but you could play it like you can the Battle Royale, and it's its own thing, and it's going to get a lot of content in the future. So I'm going to count it, and I'm going to put it as my number 10. It's new. I haven't played a lot of it yet, but everything I did in the game, I've adored. It is a free-to-play survival game where you get to build a little community, compound, whatever you want, build your house, and then you go on adventures, and then you get new materials, come back, craft, upgrade your stuff, and then so on and so forth, and you keep going through it. I love this game because I got to play it with so many of my friends, the community over on Twitch, and of course my wife, which we got to do a lot of co-op, and it's one of the only games this year that came out that all of my friends really got into it. We all love playing it as a group. We went adventuring together. We built a little compound where uh, we have a little, feels like The Walking Dead, where we like locked everything down. Everyone got their houses. We got villagers in there. It was just all so much fun. And look, I'm not a very creative guy. I've never been into these kinds of games. Even like Minecraft was never my thing or any of them. And the main reason why is I always found them to be extremely overwhelming and just so much to try and figure out but lego fortnite simplified everything to a point that someone that's dumb like me can have a lot of fun with it i was able to build a house i was able to craft all the stuff everything was in the game in a way that felt so easy for me to pick up and play and learn and they slowly added more and more materials and crafting that it made it really fun for me to just kind of learn how to play it on top of that it is in the fortnite engine which is just absolutely beautiful at this point if you guys haven't played fortnite in a long time the, the um, HDR, the, the sunsets, everything about it is just beautiful. And the Lego works really well. And getting to play with all my characters that I have in Fortnite in Lego style is also a lot of fun. Combat is simple, but really fun to use. Everything about it is just 
fun. It's just fun. You know, like there's nothing wrong with it. Now, it's only number 10 because it is missing a lot of content. It is still very early. They've got lots of future plans. And that's what gets me excited because so far it's on my top 10 list and I can't wait to see what they add to it in the future. I'm not a guy who really likes 1v1 fighting games. It's just never been my style of game. But this year, for some reason, two games came out that absolutely hooked me. The first one was Street Fighter VI. And the first time I saw it, I was like, it's just a fighting game. I'm not interested. But then I saw that they added modern controls to simplify everything. And on top of that, they added a mode called the World Tour Mode. And man, I don't care what anyone says. I had so much fun playing the World Tour Mode. But then, after all of that, I played like 40 hours of Street Fighter VI, another fighting game came out that I was also like, I'm not a fighting guy, but also had so much single player content. And that's my number nine, Mortal Kombat 1. Man, what can we say about Mortal Kombat? Graphics are just bloody, beautiful, gory, and I just love it. Um, the, the single player story mode was crazy in the best way possible i had so much fun playing the mortal kombat 1 story mode and then they had the invasion mode which i see a lot of people don't enjoy online but i had so much fun just walking around that board game and getting each of the challenges to do i completed everything in that mode i had so much fun with it like i said i'm new to fighting games so i the the, the online was just not for me so the amount of single player content that mortal kombat had and street fighter i want to still give a shout out to street fighter here but Mortal Kombat 1 was just excellent. I felt like Street Fighter was a great way to get me back into it. And then Mortal Kombat gave me just enough of a challenge with the controls, the combat. But I actually got really good. I feel like I went online in Mortal Kombat and I kicked some ass. I feel like I did okay compared to everything else I've ever done. Such a fun game. Lots of stuff. Lots of content. It was just so much fun to play a fighting game once again to the point that i actually even got the platinum in mortal kombat 1. i played that game for 75 hours and i haven't played a mortal kombat game since mortal kombat armageddon which came out in 2006. man what a great game i cannot recommend it enough there's always this weird conversation when it comes to remakes are they should they be on these lists should they not be on the list because they've they, they're games that have released in the past and now they're out again it's always a weird one and I was sitting down debating, like, should I put remakes on my list? Because there, there were a lot of remakes this year. And I decided, you know what? If it's a remake of a game that I've never played before, I'm going to count it on the best of 2023. But if it's a remake of a game that I have played, I wasn't. That was how I decided. So I want to give a shout out to Metroid Prime, Super Mario RPG, and Dead Space. That are all three incredible remakes of games that I had already played previously. So I didn't make the list. But my number eight is the Resident Evil 4 Remake. Again, this game just felt like a brand new game to me, even though it is a remake. I have played like maybe 30 minutes to an hour of the original, but everything about this just feels like a brand new game. The combat obviously is really good, moving around, the, the graphics are just incredible. And what a perfect mix for survival and action. Feels like you start off really weak, but as you play through the game, you're getting so much more powerful that by the end, with all the weapons and all the ammo you have, you are just destroying everybody. Great boss fights. It was actually a really good length too. Like, I complain, like, I love Resident Evil 2 and 3, but they are short games. And this game felt bigger than both of those games before it combined, which was awesome. It was like a perfect mix. I feel like 20 hours, 15 to 20 hours for Resident Evil game was just exactly what this game needed super fun very stressful to play which is what you want from a survival game the story wasn't the best you know it's kind of silly but it is a great resident evil game and now i understand why a lot of people love this game because as a remake it was incredible i can't imagine how great the first the original was when it came out so definitely another great game to pick up oh man i feel like everyone's gonna be so mad at me with lego fortnite remakes and the next thing on this list dlc yeah, I know I'm adding DLC, but let me explain myself, okay? My favorite game of all time got a free DLC that w I don't know where this came from. God of War Ragnarok Valhalla, a free DLC for my favorite game. Oh my God, Th what? This is incredible. It added a roguelike style gameplay to God of War. It added so much story content. I thought it was just going to be like a random mode, but there's a lot in here. If you guys have God of War Ragnarok, do not skip out on playing the DLC. 
it's about six to seven hours for free, for free, remember this. And it, it continues the story after the end of Ragnarok in a way that is just incredible. There were so many twists and turns. I love everything that Kratos and Mimir interact with. Kratos with everybody in this DLC is just fantastic. There's not enough people who are talking about this DLC. The combat, the music of God of War has always been great. And in this, it's just so much better. I wish I can tell you guys so much more, but I am telling you, an hour into this game, spoilers start happening in a way that I did not expect, and I do not want to ruin this for anybody. You guys need to go out of your way to play the DLC for God of War Ragnarok because Valhalla is one of the best DLC, and technically, I'm going to count it as a game, one of the best games of the year, my number seven, God of War Ragnarok Valhalla. All right, my number six actually is a surprise for me because it's a game, a sequel to a game that I didn't enjoy the first one. Remnant 2 came out of absolutely nowhere for me. I saw the trailer, I was like, this looks amazing. And then when I saw the title and said Remnant 2, I was like, really? Because I remember playing the first Remnant, I was like, ah, oh, this feels clunky and it wasn't for me. But man, Remnant 2 is insanely good. It's a third-person shooter game with randomly generated areas within three beautiful worlds. And there is so much to do in this game. There's so many unlockable secrets to find. It is everywhere you walk around, you feel like you are you are hunting for new secrets. There are new classes, abilities, so much to upgrade and change in the game. Oh my god, it was so much fun. The combat is so satisfying. It's one of those games that's like challenging. Like if you die, you lose your stuff and you gotta, you know, you're gonna die a lot. But I never felt like I was dying to cheap things. It felt like every time I died, I had to learn from it and I was improving. I had to level up. It was just a perfect level of difficulty for me. The co-op was so much fun. It's three-player co-op. I just wish there was cross-play, but man, playing with my wife, playing with my friends, playing with randoms, everything about it was just so good. And of course, the boss fights were so fun. Every single one of them were so unique. The decisions you make, the replayability. This is the only game this year that I beat three times. I beat it on my own. I helped my wife beat the final boss. And then I played through the game a second time because everything that you do the first time, if you do it again, because it's all randomly generated, you'll get new bosses, new fights, new encounters, and new decisions to make. And there are so many unlockables to find. And now there's DLC. I had to go back to this game. Absolutely love it. Number six, Remnant 2. I've never been a 2D Mario fan, ever. I've always been a fan of the 3D Mario games like Mario Galaxy, Mario Odyssey. But this year we got Super Mario Wonder and I got it as a gift. I had no interest in playing this game, but I was like, you know what? We got it, let's try it. And wow, what a game. Where did this come from? What is wrong with me? So many new games for me this year, new styles, new genres. Mario Wonder has such awesome and cute animations with everything whenever Mario's moving, his hat's flying off, when he ducks, he grabs his hat. All the animations are just so good. The game is so much fun. I've always hated the slippery, slippiness, slip, slipperiness, is that how you say it? Of Mario, whenever he runs around, he like slides and whatever. But I feel like they, it was really more controlled in this game. The art style, obviously, of this game is absolutely beautiful. The platforming was so much fun. And it was a perfect ramping of difficulty, where the levels start off in the world one so easy. Just like way too easy. But by the end, I was getting a challenge. I was like, this is good. It felt like a really good progression. You get all the abilities, like the different, like you got the spin move. There's so much stuff that you can get in the game. And of course, I didn't even talk about the wonder seeds yet, but every wonder seed you find will change the world that you're in, in such a cool way. It makes it so funny. The music is also really good. That's just, it's just a fun game. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. And then on top of everything I just said, the final level of Mario Wonder is probably one of the most fun I've ever had in a Mario game ever. What a great finale to a game. And as soon as I beat that game, all I wanted to do was try and 100% it. And when I found that last level, I just fell in love and was like, this is one of the best games I've played this year. And that's why my number five is Super Mario Wonder. The next two games on my list are surprisingly similar, where they're both sequels to games that came out in 2018. They both take the first game and just expand on it in a way to just take everything and make it better with the sequel. The first one, which is my number four on my list, is Octopath Traveler 2. Man, I can't get enough of the HD 2D graphics. No matter where you are in this game, 
Everything is beautiful. And then, of course, the music. Oh my god, every town, every battle, every boss fight, every character's theme song, everything is amazing. I have this whole soundtrack in my head all the time. The music of Octopath Traveler 2 is just incredible. And then add in those graphics. If you guys don't know what this game is about, it's a classic JRPG. So it means that it's turn-based combat. But they have these other little things like a break system, a weakness system, and then a boost system that just makes the combat feel so much more satisfying than just stabbing your opponent. There's a lot of things that you need to learn, decisions you need to make, and it makes the whole thing just more fast-paced and more strategic in a way that's just excellent. The game is called Octopath because you get to play as eight different characters and all eight of them have their own story. So it feels like you're playing eight JRPGs within one game and they are all so good. I remember the first game, there were like two or three of the stories that I did not like. Not this one. I adored all of these character stories from beginning to to end and then on top of that they added so much like there's a boat now you can go around the ocean there's so many side quests and hidden stuff compared to the first one and then they also added interactions this was a major thing with the first game where the eight stories kind of felt super separated and they still feel that way in this game but on top of the eight stories being their own unique thing they did add stories where two characters or three characters interact together which made it just feel like they're all best friends or closer friends than the first game and of course a huge shout out to hickory which was my favorite character of this game and my favorite character so far of the octopath series can't wait for the next one i hinted at this one in my previous ranking where i said a sequel to 2018 so you guys probably already guessed it let's get right into it my number three is spider-man 2 Man, just take everything about Spider-Man PS4 and they improved it to make this game just absolutely incredible. Being able to play as Peter and Miles with both of them having their unique abilities, unique powers, their own skill trees, it was just so great. They took the PS5 and pushed it with the no loadings. The loading system in this is just incredible. Uh, the swinging is, as always, just perfection. But then on top of that, they added a wingsuit that I, at first, I was like, oh, this is kind of silly. But playing it, I was like, no, this is the coolest thing ever. That was such a perfect way to add stuff to it. And then great side quests this time around too. Not as many side quests as the previous one, but so much more unique and way less repetitive. And they all felt so much more fun. But obviously the reason it's my number three is because of the story. Look, you get to play and fight against Kraven. There's a whole symbiote suit in it. Venom's in the game. I don't want to get too much into the spoilery of it all because I really think you guys should play this. But man, this was epic from beginning to end. A great length too, not too short, not too long. And an amazing, incredibly epic ending that has a couple twists, a couple surprises that I'm not going to spoil here. But I cannot wait for the sequels. This game was awesome. Okay, let's take everything I just said about the last two, where I said a sequel that improves on everything, but let's push that even further with this next one. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom made so much improvements to Breath of the Wild that it made Breath of the Wild feel like a damn demo. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is my number two game, and I know a lot of people it's gonna be their number one, but let me, we're gonna get there and I'm gonna explain it. I feel like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is probably one of the most perfect sequel you can ever ask for. Everything was improved. Everything was improved to the point that I never want to play Breath of the Wild ever again. That's how good of a sequel it is. The story this time is actually really good and like focused. You can actually like follow the story so much more. There are twists in a story in Zelda, which is not a like you're like, okay, a twist, but like that's not a common thing in Zelda stories in general. So many cool moments in this game. The combat was fun, the survival stuff, but then you have the abilities, fusing, rewind, all that stuff. Feels like every time I do something, I'm breaking the game, but that's not what's happening. It's on purpose. It is insane the amount of stuff you can do in this game. And then they took the map and they didn't double it. They tripled it. They've got Hyrule, you've got the sky, and then you've got the depths. And oh my God, there's so much. And then they have all the shrines. In the sky, on the... Oh my god. There is so much content to this game. It is easily the game that I spent the most hours in this year. And I adored it the whole way through. Man, just everything about this game was still incredible. I can't wait for... I don't know what they're going to do next. I don't know how they can top this at this point, to be quite honest. Okay. My number one game. 
I was debating a lot between Zelda and this game that ended up being number one. I was like, oh, which one is my number one? And then I remembered this song. And then this song came on and I was like, no, Final Fantasy 16 is my game of the year. The music, the story, the combat, everything about Final Fantasy 16 is what I look for in a video game. No other game gave me goosebumps this year. No other game hyped me up more whenever the boss theme song started. No other game made me care so much about every character, whether they be the heroes or the villains and the choices that they made. No other game made me cry this year. I'm not going to comment on that more than that, but I'm just letting you guys know it's the only game that made me cry. No other game gave me the spectacle that this game gave me with the boss fights. They, this game had everything that I wanted in the game. We had so many amazing games this year, but Final Fantasy 16 is the one that stands out to me and because I'm going to remember every single story beat for the rest of my life. This game has flaws for sure. It's not perfect, but the highs are so high that it makes me easily forget all the lows that came out. And shout out to Clive being one of the best Final Fantasy characters I've ever had in the game. Final Fantasy 16 is my game of the year. And that, everyone, is my list of top 10 games of the year. What's your list? Comment down below. If you made it all the way to here, thank you so much. You might as well subscribe because if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you're going to like everything else. Comment down below as well. What other games do you want me to co make content on? This is brand new for me. I'm jumping into variety, so I'd love to know if I miss some games, if there's games that are coming out. What other stuff? Do you want more rankings, top 10 lists, other stuff? Tell me everything in the comments. Subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I love you guys so much. Happy holidays, and thanks so much for watching.